Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Well, today I'm inside filming because the winds are really howling outside. So as I'm doing this video today, you may be able to hear some banging in the background. That's just the uh, intense winds outside. I have a feeling that I'm gonna be filming inside quite a bit this winter. Well, today I wanna to do something that's a bit silly, but I'm hopeful that it'll be both entertaining and educational. Now, if you and I were to sit down for coffee together, I'm sure you could tell me a lot of interesting stories about the characters who live in your neighborhood. Every neighborhood has its characters, and that's what makes them so interesting. You know, my neighborhood is really no different, but what is different is that I live right on the edge of Rocky Mountain National Park. So today, I'd like to introduce you to some of the fascinating characters that I rub shoulders with every day. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Stensland. Welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to Rocky Mountain National Park. Today I want to introduce you to some of the various species of tree here in Rocky. Now, it's a bit embarrassing to admit, but often when I'm out in the forest by myself, I find myself talking to the trees. I comment on their beauty, I celebrate their funny quirks, and I simply delight in their presence. You know, they're living beings floating here with us on this blue speck of dust at the far edge of the Milky Way. We've not yet found life anywhere out in the vastness of space. And so it seems to me that at the very least, we should notice, celebrate, and care for the amazing life we find here on Earth. For many of my first years here, I didn't really pay attention to the trees. They were simply background to the gorgeous mountains and lakes. I didn't know their names or how they differed from one another. But as the decades have gone by, I've gotten to know many of them. So today, I'd like to introduce you to a few of my long-armed neighbors. Now, this won't be a scientific look at them, but rather my own personal observations about what makes each of them so interesting to me. I'm very fortunate that my house and my office are located right near the eastern border of Rocky Mountain National Park, tucked away into a large ponderosa forest that stretches right into the lower portions of Rocky Mountain National Park. So when you drive into Rocky through the main Beaver Meadow entrance, most of the trees that you're going to see on either side of the road are ponderosa pines. Ponderosa pines are the introverts of the park. They have a friendly demeanor, but like to keep a good deal of space between them and everything else. They grow in the lower portions of the park in the large meadows where they can get space to soak in as much sunlight as possible. Because they keep that open space around them, they have some of the best views in the park, looking towards the park's towering peaks. The ponderosa pines also have very thick skin and don't let much bother them. Their thick puzzle-shaped bark has evolved to protect them from fires. Now, if you get in close on a day when the sun is warming their trunk and then take a deep breath, you'll notice that they're wearing some pretty sweet cologne. They often smell like butterscotch or vanilla. Now, one of my favorite things about these trees is that the older ones can be quite quirky. As they age, they sometimes take on these whimsical shapes at the top as if they no longer care what anyone thinks about them. I find that when I'm out walking through a ponderosa pine forest, that there is just so much to delight in. Well, tucked into the shadows on the sides of the hills, not too far from the Ponderosa, you may find one of my neighbors who sometimes feels a bit grouchy. This is the Douglas fir. Unlike the Ponderosa, he seems to do all he can to avoid the sun. Now, I don't know what he's hiding, but he seems to have no interest in being in the light. Douglas fir trees grow primarily on north-facing slopes. Because these northern slopes don't get as much sunlight, they are cooler and hold on to more moisture. In the winter, you may notice that some hills are bare and others have lots of snow. Well, it's the northern facing slopes that have all that snow and that's where you're gonna find the uh, Douglas fir. Now, the reason I think of him as uh, something of a grouch uh, is that everything about him seems to say, stay away. Not only has he chosen to hide himself on the northern slopes, but he has this really rough bark around him and all of these sharp, flat needles. Even his cones are extra jagged. 
though truthfully, I think they're kind of stylish. Now, as you head up a little higher in the park, you're going to encounter the Lodgepole Pine. If you've ever driven the road up to Bear Lake, most of the trees along the last few miles of road are Lodgepole Pine. Lodgepole seem to be very social, well, at least with each other. Most of the time, you'll find them huddled together as if in conversation. They seem to ignore everyone else and mostly keep to themselves. And they all seem to have the same fashion sense, which seems to be about being extra tall and extra skinny, with most of their branches way up at the very top. Much of the time, they look a lot like their name, Pole. Because they huddle so close together and have such thick branches at the top, they block out most of the light from hitting the ground, making it nearly impossible for other plants and trees to grow in their vicinity. Some people refer to the area around the lodgepoles as the lodgepole desert. <laughs> so while on the one hand, they seem to be very social trees, they aren't social with everyone. Most of you are familiar with the local beauty queen of the park. She turns the heads of everyone who passes by. She's tall, elegant, graceful, and downright stunning. During the spring and autumn, she dresses in clothes so vibrant that people flock from far and wide to see her. I'm speaking about the Aspen of Rocky Mountain National Park. They're simply amazing to see. However, when I spend time wandering through the aspen groves, I'm always shocked by what a mess she makes. There are branches and old fallen trees everywhere. It kind of reminds me of some people I know who look so put together on the outside, but behind the door there's quite the mess. Well, another interesting thing about her is that she makes her own community. All the trees in an aspen forest are simply parts of the same tree. New trees sprout up from their roots. The aspen trees lose their leaves in mid-October and sleep until mid-May, meaning that they're one of the only trees that has no color during the winter. Now, the next neighbor whom I really love is our local adventurer. She thrives on adapting to the most challenging of environments. You know, it sometimes seems like she tries to find the most unlikely place to grow and then prove that it is possible. Now, this is the limber pine. One of the ways you can spot the limber pine is by its long, flexible branches with a little pom-pom-like bunch of needles at the end. It grows at the higher elevations of the park. Now, in the forests where there is a lot of soil, they may grow to look much like a lot of the trees around them. But in more challenging places, they will take on all sorts of interesting shapes as they stretch around rocks and grow to avoid the wind. Sometimes these trees will grow right up at the very edge of tree line where it becomes too cold for trees to survive. Here, the limber pine may not get over 10 feet tall. The howling winds twist them into large bush-like shapes. One of the things I notice is that in these conditions, the trunks will take on kind of a pinkish hue. Some of these bush forms can actually be hundreds of years old. Speaking of old, if you've ever hiked to Lake Hiaha, you may have seen the two limber pines growing right next to the trail, very close to the lake. Now these ones are probably over 400 years old. So the limber pine, with its flexibility, adaptability, and spirit of adventure, certainly has my respect and admiration. Now the last neighbor I want to introduce you to today is the subalpine fir. I think of him as Mr. Dignified. He always stands so straight and tall, trying not to let a needle get out of place. He almost always has a pointy top that reaches high into the sky. And if you look closely at his trunk, you'll notice that it's not rough like many of the other trees, but it's much more smooth with a tasteful gray color with tiny polka dots. It was almost as if he has a stylist. Now, the subalpine fir is so proper that he even holds his cones upright and has them in a deep royal blue color. Perhaps he comes from royal blood, I, I don't know. The subalpine fir can be found along many of the high lakes in the park, and they too grow up near tree line, though not quite as adventurous as the limber pine. Well, these wonderful neighbors of mine with their varying personalities always make me smile. They give me food for thought and often inspire me. Their silent presence seems to transmit a sense of peace. I feel so privileged to be able to spend time with them. Well, I know that that was pretty brief and unscientific overview. There's certainly a lot more I could say about every one of these trees. 
And there are many more trees that I could, could have introduced you to as well. But I hope that this will help you to recognize some of the trees on your next visit to Rocky Mountain National Park. I guess I like to think that when we truly begin to see and know our natural world, that we can't help but fall in love with it. And when we fall in love with it, we'll also care for it. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and for putting up with all the noisy wind. We'll see you all soon. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.